I love music. That's a pretty nothing statement. Most people love music, but still, the point stands. Music is a very important part of my life, and over the years, it's helped me to process, understand, and appreciate this complicated, chaotic existence. One of the things I love most about games is that as an interactive medium, music can be used in more interesting, playful ways. Although a great soundtrack can add texture and meaning to a world and the events that occur within it, for instance I challenge anyone to listen to Clementine Sweet from Telltale's The Walking Dead and not immediately start to cry, Games are capable of doing so much more. Rhythm games like Guitar Hero let you mimic the performance of music, your physical actions replicating the melodies of individual instruments. Others, such as Hotline Miami, use music to symbolise danger, ramping up the soundtrack when the player engages with enemies before removing it entirely once the threat has been stomped to death. Portal 2, meanwhile, creates harmonies as the player fiddles around with its puzzle elements. A laser passing through a cube will generate a subtle tune, for instance. Your progress through a chamber reflected by this gradually swelling soundscape. Then there's the video game album, a personal favourite. Sayonara Wild Hearts, Teenage Blob, these games allow players to experience a collection of songs, a full album of tracks as they play. The visuals and mechanics complement the music, combining to create a cohesive experience that elevates each individual element. You often assume the role of a character who exists in a world created by the music, your journey giving the tone and lyrics physical form. I assumed Ritmos, a recently released puzzle game by developer Floppy Club, was an album game. In some ways it sort of is. Your role in this world is to build a set of albums that you then neatly slot into a record box once you're done, but keep playing and it becomes clear that it's more than that. Ritmos is an education, a journey through musical genres that aims not just simply to entertain the player, but to nurture within them a deeper understanding of music as a whole. Ritmos is a puzzle game about reconstructing planets. With levels fractured and floating freely through a block colour void, you're tasked with completing challenges on each face of these broken cubes in order to make them whole again. The goal is to solve a series of mazes, dragging a path through a number of cylinders before looping back to where you began. The puzzles themselves are fairly simple, the game throwing in a number of twists as you progress to make them a bit harder. An ice cube that slides from edge to edge, blocks that shift the level's layout, octahedrons that can be pushed by your path. There are also a few other cool additions, but I won't spoil them here. Now, I'm no puzzle aficionado, but even I know Ritmos isn't a best-in-class entry into the genre. Although I did get stuck a couple of times because I'm an idiot, I was able to charge through the game in just under three hours. There's nothing really here you haven't seen before, and I wouldn't recommend this to anyone looking for a pure puzzle game. The Witness, this is not. But here's why Ritmos is special. Those cylinders you pass through, they make a sound. A drum beat, a guitar strum, a click, a bong, a clunk. These sporadic noises will spring out from relative silence as you complete a single side of this fractured cuboid world. And at first, it just sounds really weird. A single gong being struck every other second. But then you complete another side. And then another. And slowly, gradually, they coalesce into a beautiful soundscape. Each of the game's seven solar systems is inspired by a specific music genre from around the world. German techno, Ethiopian jazz, Indonesian gamelan, Japanese environmental. They are genres I, ignorantly, knew very little about, and approached each set of levels with a sense of genuine excitement for what I was about to hear next. And the best part is that Ritmos assumes you're not familiar with its choices, and relishes in telling you more about them. Each level comes with a couple of facts explaining the instruments 
instruments essential to the genre, its history, influences, and some recommended listening if you're curious to find out more. There's even a link to a dedicated website created by the developers stuffed with videos, explainers, and curated playlists for each solar system. On top of all this, completing a level provides you with an instrument and lets you fiddle and play with it over the top of your recently completed soundscape. So Ritmos isn't a puzzle game? Well, I mean, it sort of is, but it's it's also not really. It's a lesson. A lesson about music, about the constituent parts that make it whole. One side of the cube sounds wrong. Lonely. And so your brain starts to seek out pairs, combinations, layers that make the noise, well, music. It's fascinating to hear it all come together around you through play. To feel like you've had a small hand in the creation of something so unique and interesting. It's just a shame the puzzles are so basic. It is possible to miss cylinders in a section and still progress. You'll get a bronze medal instead of a gold one for doing this, but missing cylinders remove a key part of the overall composition. More so than in other puzzle games, I pushed myself to achieve gold every time, purely because a half-assed solution had a profound effect on the sound of each level. It's a neat little source of motivation to actually hear your failures. I've never encountered this anywhere else, and it's a shame to see it used in a game that's quite unchallenging. This idea could absolutely be expanded further, and I really hope it is. But seeing all this, the more I played, the more I reckoned these puzzles were actually more like gates. Forced pauses. Gaps that allowed me to take a breather, to digest the current soundscape at that moment in time. To hear, really hear, each individual instrument. To understand how it sounds, and appreciate its place within the wider piece. I love music, but I have no musical talent whatsoever. An ex-partner of mine once banned me from singing in the car because of how tone deaf I am. But Ritmos has sort of changed my relationship with music a little bit. Since playing, I find myself listening more intently, trying to seek out the layers and understanding how they fit within this wider piece. Ritmos has not only helped me understand music, but has also given me a greater understanding of the foundations of genres I didn't even know existed until I started playing the game. I think that's a pretty great achievement. Best of all, I'm now extremely into Ethiopian jazz. It's so good. Like, it's so good. Thank you, Ritmos. It's so good. <laughs> Hello, thank you for watching. This is the first episode of a regular show I'll be doing on RPS, where I'm just going to tell you about really cool indie games I've found. So, thank you for watching, expect more of these. Best of all, all episodes of this short will be exclusive for 30 days to you, our RPS supporters. Is a big thank you for your continued patronage, it really does mean a lot. Also, if you're looking for more indie recommendations, why not check out Indiescovery? It's a podcast I do with Rebecca and Rachel, and I think it's quite good. For all your PC gaming needs, make sure to check out rockpapershotgun.com, and I'll be back very soon with more daft videos about PC games. Bye for now.